Hello friends, welcome back to SQL with Manoj. In my previous videos, we talked about the identity property, its introduction, and we saw how we can set a particular column in a table with the identity property. We tried to insert some records and we saw the behavior of the identity values getting inserted. In the second video, we saw how to check and receive the identity value in a particular table. And in this video, as a developer's perspective, I'll be talking more about identity property. Although identity property uh, gives a lot of facility you know in generating sequence values but there are few things that the identity property does not guarantee and we have to take care of those right out of which the first thing is the uniqueness of values right and we'll see in the example below so I'll be taking the same record set that I was that we saw in our previous video okay and here what I'll do is I'll try to insert the same value that is already inserted in our previous run right that is wanted value 3 is already present there and I'll try to insert this 203 value again okay so let's uh, try to just insert here like this right so as you can see here right uh, employ employee ID is a uh, entity column and we cannot insert like this right so there is other way to insert explicit values into the employee ID column uh, by disabling the entity property of this table right how you can disable it you have to set the entity insert to on for this particular table right so I'll be setting the identity insert to on this will disable the identity property of the table and it will allow us to insert the explicit values right so I'll be having employee ID column here and the value here and what I'll do is I'll insert this value and see this one row got affected it means that you know the, ins the identity value was inserted and after that I'll just set to off right so this will enable back the identity property right and we'll see the 103 record got inserted right so although this employee ID is a uh, entity column it still allows us to insert the value as 103 having duplicate of 103 value right there's another way to insert duplicates or you know um, non unique values right so what you can do is you can receive the entity value to any of these particular values so that you know whenever the new records are getting inserted they will get inserted after that sequence okay so let's receive 202 again back right and now if I'll try to insert this new value right it will get inserted after 102 it will get the ideas 103 right see so now there are three duplicates of 103 right and let's again insert ABC and you can see there is 104 right okay so this shows you that you know although uh, you are having this column as entity but it will still allow you you know duplicate values right so to make sure to not to have duplicate duplicate values you have to set this column as a primary key or a unique key right okay let's see the second point it's consecutive values within a transaction okay so as you can see the same example you are not getting consecutive values in a same transaction okay so here you see that you know these are random values that got inserted and somewhere you will get similar values that got inserted right so consecutive values are also not guaranteed okay now let's move to the third point that is consecutive values after server restart or other failures so even if you know you make sure that you know these values are not getting inserted like this but still you know there may be server failures or SQL server restarts so even if you know these things occur you might get you might not get consecutive values right so let's say the current identity values 104 or let's say it was some point of time it was 102 and suddenly the server got restarted or if there was a failure right in the server and when the server got restart you might see a gap of identity values so now let's say you the 11th record may be entering would get a value that will have a gap of maybe 50 or maybe 1000 or maybe 10,000 right so consecutive values still not guaranteed here right uh, fourth point and last point is reuse of values so by reuse of values it means that let's say I have a transaction and it is and I'm inserting these three records right so these three records will get value after 104 so R1 will get 105 R2 will get 106 and R3 will get 107 okay let's go ahead and do that right so as you can see here 5 6 and 1 they got R1 R2 R3 right they got 105 106 107 let's say due to some issue this transaction got rolled back right now all these values are gone right but let's say you again try to reinsert those values right r1 r2 and 
R3. Okay. Okay. Now let's see what values they got. See, they didn't resumed after 105, right? So 105, 106, 107. So R1, R2, R3 in the previous transaction, in the previous transaction got 105, 106, and 107. But in this transaction, they started with 108, 109, 110, right? So the reuse of values is also not guaranteed right so whenever you are dealing with identity property you have to make sure that you know you are dealing with all such kind of things and these things might happen anytime so you have to make sure that you know you are taking care of all these things that you know the identity property does not guarantee okay now let's move to some other things that i want to cover for identity property so there are some more functions that are available you know for identity property like one of them is ident underscore seed this will give the seed value of the particular table column okay and you know uh, I'll reiterate that you know in a particular table you can have only one column as the identity property so it's not mandatory to provide the column name if you provide the table name it is enough right so for this particular table if you want to select the seed uh, this is the function that you can use ident underscore seed and similar for increment value that you want to see it is ident underscore incr for increment right with the table name it will show you as one right uh, there is one more function that you can use with the select statement with the specifically select into statement right select into statement is used to create a new table while selecting record from a particular table without creating the scheme of that particular table right so let's say if i don't use into option okay if i just do a select identity as employee ID and with all the other columns that are present in the employee table right let's see if it works so this does not work because the entity function can only be used with select statement that has an into clause right so into clause will create a temporary table with the same structure of the employee table and with the same column signatures right so as you saw that you know this employee table had these random IDs now what I Thing is, I want to make sh I want to make a series of employee IDs starting with 100 that has an increment of one, right, for all these records. So what I will do is I'll insert all these records from employee table into an another table, right? And what I'll do is I'll use the identity function that has a data type of int seed as 100 and increment as one, and I'll name this column as employee ID. I'll not be using the employee ID column from the employee table, right? So let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so it says that 13 records affected. Now let's see the records in this new table. As you can see, the records, those who are inserted in this new table, got the new fresh employee IDs starting from 100 and in sequence that has an increment of one value, right? So this is a very handy tool to, you know, whenever you want to, whenever you think that, you know, you want to clean all these employee IDs or you want to rearrange those employee IDs or any particular entity column, right, in a particular table. This is a very handy option okay and the last thing is I want to show you is entity call keyword so this entity call keyword can be a sub substitute for your entity column right that is, that is employee ID so rather than using employee ID what you can do is you can reuse you can use entity call keyword right so let's try to use it what I'm doing is I'm doing select entity call comma all the columns from the new table right so it shows me the employee ID as the entity call so it automatically names it as employee ID rather than identity call okay and all the other columns right including the identity column because I've used select star it is giving me all these columns from the employee table okay and you can use this entity call keyword with the where clause you can have this with the order by having and uh, the group by clause also right let's check it with the filter clause okay so it beautifully you know uses the Identity keyword as a substitute for the employee ID. Okay, and let's check with the employee table also. Okay, so it is the same thing, and uh, it will give you this particular structure when you will. So there might be uh, cases when you are dealing with some dynamic SQL and you know some some complex logic, then you can use this identity call. Okay, and we may see uh, this usage in our in in our you know forthcoming videos. Okay, so this is all about identity property, and I think I've covered. Most of these, you know, hidden features like, you know, the entity call, the entity function that you can use with select uh, into uh, clause, these entity seed and identity INCR functions. And this is all about entity. And uh, thank you very much for watching these videos. And uh, please like the video if you really like it. And please let me know your comments and suggestions. Right. I'll be happy to take them.
and cover them in my next videos and please subscribe my channel thanks a lot